Hey guys, it's Will from Tested, and for today's show and tell, I have this guy right here. Uh, this is an Intel Nuke. I'm gonna read the number off the back because it's long. This is the D54250WYK. Uh, it has a Core i5-4520, I think, inside U. Uh, it's basically a 15 watt Intel processor. It's a current generation Haswell processor. And the upshot is that this little guy is a tiny little computer uh, that does most of the stuff that you wanna do aside from hardcore gaming. Um, now there's a couple of other competitors out there. Uh, Gigabyte makes a thing called the Bricks that actually has discrete graphics. Uh, the Nuke machines all use Intel integrated graphics, which aren't quite as capable, but more than fine for normal desktop work and even some light gaming. Um, and the reason I think this is neat is it's essentially, like it is a tiny little computer. It's about the size of an Apple TV, uh, maybe a little tiny bit thicker and wider than that. Um, but it, if you need computers for projects or even something that's more capable than a laptop, maybe less capable than a real desktop to take on the road and stuff like that with you, this size machine is perfect. Uh, Intel sells the Nuke in a bunch of different configurations all kinds of CPU sizes and capacities ranging from like $200 machines up to six or $700 machines. Uh, this one's more or less right in the middle. It's like a $500, 300, $400, $500 computer. Um, and the, there's a trick to all of the Nuke machines. They're bare bones computers basically. So what that means is that they have a motherboard and a CPU soldered on. You can't take the CPU out, but they, they're missing some key components. So they don't have memory. They don't have uh, storage by default for the most part. Uh, and you may even have to add things like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth if you want that. So like I said, I've used them for home theater PCs. I took one as a like t take gaming on the road machine with me uh, because they have basic inputs and outputs. They're all a little bit different. This particular model has four USB 3.0, two on the back and two on the front. It has an IR blaster. It has a headphone jack on the front. It has a mini HDMI, uh, ethernet, and mini display port, as well as the power plug. The inside's kind of interesting on these, because like I said, they're bare bones machines. They don't ha come with a lot of hardware by default. So this one is, I've equipped with, uh, I think eight gigs of memory, an mSATA SSD, and then underneath that, you can't see it, is a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth adapter. Uh, all of these machines come with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antennas built in. Uh, usually you'll figure to spend another 150 or $200 for the mSATA SSD, the Wi-Fi adapter, and the memory, um, depending on you know, what capacity and speed you want and all that stuff. Uh, but the upshot is a nice machine. They come with Visa mounts, so you can hang them off the back of your TV in your living room if you're looking for a home theater machine, something like that. And, and I think they're pretty fantastic, uh, especially for the price. Like I said, you may want more graphics capability if you're gonna play games. Uh, I've, with this particular model with the i5 processor, I've played stuff like South Park, The Stick of Truth, Spelunky, you know, Thomas was alone kind of indie games. That stuff works great. Uh, you're not gonna play Batman Arkham Origins or, you know, Skyrim or something like that on a machine that has this level of graphics in it. So this is the Intel Nuke. It stands for Next Unit of Computing. It's Intel's small form factor home DIY crowd PC. There are some other alternatives out there, the Gigabyte Bricks and a bunch of others. Uh, I like these because they're small, they're relatively low power. You can hang them off of a Visa mount, make a perfect home theater PC, and you can even do some light gaming on the ones with the higher and graphics cords. So uh, that's it for today's show and tell. We'll be back next Monday with another one. I'm Will. See you guys later.